Hello, hello. Thank you. Hi, everyone. First, uh, my name is Michael Henry. I work for Mozilla out of the Berlin office. First of all, I want to say thank you to Urban Bob Liu Xing um, for inviting us here and helping us to run this project, which I'm about to talk about. Um, so let me tell you a little bit about myself. I was originally hired on this uh, very awesome but very uh, sad project called Firefox OS. <laughs> uh, I worked on that for about uh, three and a half years and it was my baby. I uh, loved every part about it. I was a web developer and as a web developer, making a phone operating system based on the web was just about the coolest thing you could possibly do. Uh, I think judging from the laughter, you know what happened with that story. But we did learn a lot of very valuable things, uh, specifically about how we communicate and implement failure, how to back off from projects. And I think one of the biggest learnings we can take away from Firefox OS as a project is that when we go big and far and fast uh, and scale before we, before we measure, uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, when, we, when we scale too quickly, we find ourselves in a position where it's hard to fail properly. We didn't learn how to measure and how to understand how well we're doing up front. And so the projects that we do now that are much more experimental, uh, quicker, they're much more like startups rather than these very big, far sweeping projects. And so that's what I'm here to talk about uh, with you today, and that's why I'm here in Taipei. So let me talk about that. I work on a project called Deep Speech for Mozilla. Deep Speech is a machine learning voice recognition algorithm, open source. We use Google's TensorFlow, which is a toolkit uh, for making recurrent neural networks. You may or may not have heard of it, but that's not important. Um, we do have, so we have very amazing, smart engineers working on this. However, we have a big problem for building. Uh, if you, I don't know if any of you know about how machine learning works, but it's able to make an algorithm really be able to predict and understand uh, any sort of scenario. It has to have a lot of data. So, for instance, if you have a artificial intelligence, or sorry, machine learning algorithm for predicting, uh, for looking at a picture and seeing are there flowers in this picture, or are there people in this picture, you need to have thousands and thousands and millions of examples pictures that you feed to this algorithm and say, this picture has flowers, this picture doesn't have flowers. And you see that over and over and over and over and over again until that algorithm can understand what a flower means from a mathematical point of view. That's what a neural network is. So for doing voice recognition, in order, in order to do it well, you need to have lots and lots of labeled voice data. What this means is you need little clips, maybe a second long of a sentence with the text for that sentence, and you need maybe uh, you need 10,000 hours of a single language with a single accent. So if, if anyone has ever tried to do a voice recognition on, say, Siri, and you don't have American English accent, you may have a problem with it. And this all comes down to data. So that's, that's the problem that we currently have. We want to get data. We need to get data to train our artificial intelligence algorithm. Uh, but we also think, since we're Mozilla and we're collecting this data, can we make this data open and available to anybody so that not just Mozilla can train this algorithm, but universities, researchers, new startups? Because right now, the people who own that data are companies like Google, Amazon, Facebook, Nuance, Apple. These companies, they protect this data as if it was their secret sauce because open source algorithms for artificial intelligence and machine learning are all open source. Many papers published on them. The state of the art is uh, well known and published. But the data behind these algorithms, the data that makes the products that we use for voice recognition, that's really hard to find. And so we want to make that data available to everyone, and we want to collect this data in a way that everyone can participate. So that's on here. So I work on a project within Deep Speech called Project Voice Day. We're soon going to change this name, but this is our temporary name for now. That's what you should we have to change this because this is actually owned by another company. Okay. It's probably uh, copyright. Yeah. Okay. okay. So we need to be able to collect data. So some approaches that we've already tried. So like I said, with Firefox OS, we try to go far big and scale quickly. 
or voice bank, we're doing very small experiments to help us learn about this space and figure out what the right approach is. So we've made a website. It's called murmur.bonnie.io. You can go there right now and donate your voice. We have a, a mobile phone app at the end of that that you can go and donate your voice. It's on my phone right now. We've actually paid companies to give us the data. So there's companies out there whose sole existence is to license, open, uh, license voice data. And you have to pay maybe $30,000 to $100,000 a year to license this. If you're a university researcher or student or somebody who doesn't have a big paycheck behind you, we can't get into this space. So that's just not the right way. We've also tried downloading data sets from the internet. So you may know that there are there's this open source uh, corpus of information called Project Gutenberg. And this yeah. is people reading books on paper. There's actually a thousand hours of people reading these books. Yeah. So we've tried this. We fed this into our artificial intelligence algorithm, and it's pretty good. But the problem is, somebody reading a book is very different than somebody giving a command or somebody speaking to somebody else. And it turns out that these artificial intelligence algorithms need data very similar to the type of scenario where the products will be used. And so very rarely do people read a series, read a book in a series. Very rarely do people read a book into their phone or into Alexa. Uh, what we need is people talking to each other. So. What we would love your help with is how can we collect this information in a way to be conversational, uh, to be in many different accents, to be in many different languages, to be open and accessible to all. So that's kind of what we're here. Um, so how can we achieve this together? This weekend, uh, in the Mozilla office, because we have actually too many people to use the space, we will be, do be doing a two-day uh, design thinking designathon around building a mobile app for collecting and gamifying uh, donating your points. So we want to we want to build three or four not build, but we want to design three or four what we're calling sticky concepts such that this app uh, where you basically just donate, you just read into it, it's fun to do. It's fun to do, people want to do it, people want to share. We want help with how to do that. We want help with ideas. Um, and we want to get feedback from the type of community. So, we will run this design fund using the design thinking methodologies. We will do a hackathon next Wednesday in this space here based on those concepts. So this weekend we'll do some concepts three or Next week we'll build some prototypes here if you're interested. So if you're a web developer, programmer, app developer, come back here next Wednesday and come, come work with us and have with us. Um, and then from the weekend, from these concepts, we're actually going to take uh, what comes out of this weekend and my team is going to work on this and release a version of this, version one, in June. So we have uh, specific plans to not just run this as a community event, but also to use this event as a launch pad for our products and to keep involved with anybody who, who basically wants to be involved in this project. So it's obvious to me, it's obvious what Mozilla is. We're getting uh, help from the smart people of the Taipei community to help us design this. But what can what can you do? Why would you take part of this? Besides the, you know, contributing to the Mozilla mission, which is great, but there should be more than just that for for why you're here. So we want to we want to help train and sway people on the design thinking methodologies. Because like I said, Firefox OS, we learned a lot of lessons there. One of the ways we've been combated are uh, our approaches, uh, our approach to scale pivot is to take the design thinking approach, which is very small experiments, measure, and iterate. Uh, so we want to teach those methodologies and help grow our toolkit uh, together. And then we want to have further opportunities to collaborate on this project. So this project doesn't end this weekend. This doesn't end next week when we go home. It doesn't end in June when we launch V1. This is a long-term investment on Mozilla's part. I'm not saying that the products itself that we build, like the app we build, would be a long-term investment. I'm saying the concept of voice data as open source uh, is something we're sort of committed to. We want to continue to work with you and have your help on this. Uh, and of course, we'll also give you free food, drinks, live files, all the stuff that comes with coming to one of these events. Uh, so this is this is the basic schedule. We'll just be doing a bunch of workshops. A lot of these workshops come from a Mozilla uh, website that I'll show you here called toolkit, toolkit.mozilla.org. I don't know if you've ever seen this, but this is where we kind of keep all of the methodologies we've been developing for design thinking. 
So all of our experimentation, all of our hypotheses, all of our metrics gathering, we kind of group those by different methods and we put a simple how-to guide for running those methods. We'll be using these methods this weekend uh, when we do the design of the workshop and we'll be using them for this project going forward. Uh, yeah, but actually I have I have a lot more that I can talk about in terms of the <laughs> So I have a lot more that I can talk about in terms of the app itself, but I think for the concepts for, for, for this talk, that's all you really need to know. If you'd love to know more about this weekend workshop or the Hacker Cloud next week, please come talk to me. I'd love to talk to you more. I'd love to see you with me, with your email, uh, let's, just, let's just talk about it. But, Eugene, do you have anything to add? No. Maybe you can like a give a short version of Chinese version of the introduction. Well, well maybe it's just to uh, tell everybody that what we have to or what we have to do. Friends, you can get 
10 million users very quickly, very easily. Yeah. If we have 10 million users contributing third period of like 10 seconds, then we are we're in good shape. Uh, so we'd love your help to figure out how to make something that is interesting to you, something that you want to share amongst your friends, something that probably has some sort of game or social mechanic around it. Uh, I don't know if you've ever played like Telephone or Mad Libs, uh, but something that you would actually have fun and would make you laugh. That's what we're going after. So, um, come talk to me. Actually, to be uh, full disclosure, this weekend the design itself spot is already filled up. So there's no more tickets available. There is, uh, but if you really, really want to come, come talk to a Yushin and I, and we'll, we can yeah. figure something out. But it is pretty full right now. Uh, but next weekend, Wednesday, the hackathon. Come, come hack with us. I'm going to get my hands dirty and we start coding as well. So let's, let's have some fun. Uh, any other, any other questions? Is this only English now? Uh, Always, yes, and it's a very good question. Right now, this is a way in but we would love to help not only translate this, but the app that we build. So when you say 60 million, it actually needs to be all the same accent. Uh, so we want to collect as much, so we will group by language and accent, also age, gender, but we're going to do a lot of uh, grouping of the data. We want to collect as much as possible, but yes, we will to get into the details uh, as much as we can. We're able to get to a 95% accuracy rate, which is what you need for a product. You need 10,000 hours for that language with a, for a single accent. Uh, so Siri has about a 92% accuracy rate for American English. And they have, uh, I think Alexa is like 87% or something for, for German. Uh, so there's still, this, this field is still wide open. There's not, like a lot of uh, companies have the single accent, single data, like Baidu has Mandarin covered pretty well, uh, but there's still much opportunity for accents, and much opportunity for languages, it's especially an open source version of this data. Uh, so help us, help us build it.